Welcome to the Life of Hair. My name's James Atkinson. Thank you very much for choosing to join into this week's episode. Now, in this week's episode, we are going to talk about a hybrid haircut, which is somewhere between the wolf cut and the butterfly cut, uh, which is very, 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 very viral at the moment in 2024. But if you're watching this in the future, then it's just a cracking mixture of haircuts to create wonderful texture and movement. So we've taken our first section, as you've seen, through the occipital bone and down towards the middle of the back of the ear. And we've taken a vertical section and we're pulling the hair straight back towards me and I'm cutting a square line that will ultimately get a little bit longer towards the perimeter. And the main reason for this is because within the nape area, the hair gets longer because the scalp or the neck travels down and further away from me as I stand behind this uh, haircut because of the occipital bone. And that's something to bear in mind when we're creating a little bit of length on the perimeter, that we're going to get a natural extension of length towards the perimeter as we pull the hair straight back. Um, we'll also get a little bit more length built up into the corner um, on the around the kind of perimeter of the hairline uh, because of the over direction and pulling the hair straight back. Um, we'll do exactly the same thing on the opposite side of that section, but I won't show you that because um, nothing changes. So all you do is simply pull everything straight back, the same as you see right now, and cut a square line. Then I've taken a section that is just below the highest point of the head, um, and you can see that it's a rectangular section that runs through the parietal ridge. I've then taken a vertical section and I've pulled the hair straight out, following the head shape around. So a little bit of elevation, as you can see here, on the first section, and then pulling the hair straight back on the subsequent section and connecting into the hair underneath. There's no disconnections in this particular haircut. It is all connected and a very, very simple technique to follow. The extended length of the perimeters is all created by the fact that we're cutting a square line. Now underneath we over directed the hair backwards and we're doing exactly the same thing on these subsequent sections pulling the hair back creating extra length towards the face. Now the main reason we're doing this is because of the wolf cut slash butterfly cut shaping that we see around the front of both of these haircuts. Now, one of the things that we need to bear in mind is that we want to leave a bit more density in that area by overdirecting the hair back because we are going to remove a lot of weight from that area. We don't want to inadvertently remove weights that we needed from that front area. So overdirecting the hair all back is actually a very, very good way of protecting the weight and the length as we travel towards the face. One thing we will be for sure in this particular instance, because there was already a shag haircut on here, we will be running out of length. So as we pull that final section back, there will be very little or nothing to cut, dependent on obviously the length of your client's hair or your hair. So in this particular instance, as we did previously, we follow this technique all the way through. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit so that you don't have to watch me do it all again. But um, just giving you an insight into how I'm thinking, what I'm doing, when I'm thinking about building shapes into people's hair. It's very, very important that we do things symmetrically or as close to symmetrically on both sides as humanly possible. Then we're onto the rectangle section on the top here. Now, what we were doing here is following the head shape around. So, for example, we were pulling the hair vertically straight up out of the head and we will have a guide from our back section which we can just see by my fingernail there and we're going to cut a square line that travels right through to the front and as we get to the front the head will naturally curve around and we're going to follow that shape as we go a bit like when we pull all the hair out at 45 degrees to cut the shag haircut or a wolf cut or whatever um, we will create a diagonal line and build up the weight um, and shape around the face because that is how these haircuts are indicative of their kind of unique style is that they're very very textured and 
um, the, all of the emphasis of the haircut is really focused around the front. But this is a way of creating movement and texture in the back of the haircut as well as in the front. So it's a really good way of, for those clients who've got very thick hair or you want to have more movement all around, this is a cracking way to adapt that particular style. So we're going to take vertical sections and each and every section will be pulled up to the guideline vertically upwards um, and cut following the head shape around as we did that very first section. And this is not an over exaggerated thing, but this is just to make sure that we do kind of protect and remove weight around the face and the cheekbones simultaneously because you'll see in just a second when I show you what kind of shape this creates and the way that we go to refine this shape and remove weight etc we do want to have a little bit of weight and shape to play with because we need to personalize to fit each client's head shape so that's that side and you can see how that line um, descends into the length at the back there and that's creating that kind of wolf cut uh, butterfly cut type of shape now remember obviously all of these haircuts are interchangeable and intermixable because they are fundamentally a graduated haircut this is graduation around the face we're doing it in a slightly shorter way this time but whether you do a long graduation which is kind of more towards the rachel from friends haircut which uh, the kind of two original haircuts she had or you're doing something shorter and like this with a bit more texture and a bit more movement it is fundamentally the same principle that is something that I always try and stress to people to make life a little bit easier you're not recreating the wheel you're simply adapting your styles um, and obviously dependent on how thick the hair is you may not want to pull all the hair straight up straight out of the head shape like I have there because it will be about um, personalizing and refining and creating the right lengths for the individual hair type. The hair type here is actually reasonably fine but there is quite a lot of hair and then once I've blow dried it I just blast dried it with the hair dry. I didn't do anything fancy with the blow dry. I've gone through I've elevated all my sections and using a simple point cutting technique no channel cutting no slicing the hair in this particular instance doesn't lend itself to that kind of technique it is just better that I go through and break up all of these ends and you can see already there's quite a lot of texture and movement going on in the haircut already so it's 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 important that you recognize that and you just adapt to that it doesn't need a tremendous amount of texturizing because texturizing can actually make the hair look slimmer and flatter and you lose some of the texture that is naturally in the hair. And that should actually make it more difficult for the client to do at home. So be aware, think about what the hair is doing, what it looks like and talk to the client. Obviously, will you blow dry your hair? Will you blast dry your hair? Will you use a brush, right? That is very important. That will determine how you go about your texturizing but you'll notice the texturizing has been done in pretty much the same way the haircut was and that's very very important indeed because we want to follow through on each of the sections that we take to make sure that we create uh, a lived in texture around the haircut and we're not altering the shape that we have created so we can see now this is the finished result and we've got lovely texture shape around the face there exposing the cheekbones going into some length through the back there can be worn obviously very messy very textured or a little flatter as you see it here i wanted to kind of see it as it was rather than doing one of those kind of here's the finished result kind of uh, finishes because well i do that all the time and i don't think that's always reflective of what you're going to get from the technique i hope you've enjoyed this episode and i'll see you again in another episode of the life of hair